Now let's check in with homeopathic doctor Bryce Wild to find out what's coming up on Wild on Health. Hi, Bryce. Nika, thank you. Well, are you living a heart-healthy lifestyle? The question tonight is that, and we're wondering because the latest report card out from the Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation says that us Canadians, we're not taking our heart health seriously. We're ignoring a lot of the risks. We're in denial. So tonight, it's all about heart health. And we're going to be looking inside the heart up and close. We'll also tell you what foods you should be eating, supplements you should be taking, and some other lifestyle tips, plus your calls and questions. That's coming up next here live from the Li Ka Shing uh, Knowledge Center Institute uh, right after this. Back to you, Nika. Okay, Bryce, thank you very much. Before starting any new health program or before you begin taking any medication or supplement, always check with your primary health care provider. Welcome to Wild on Health, your weekly holistic prescription for living healthy naturally. We're live on location tonight at the Lee Kashing uh, Wellness, or rather, uh, <laughs> rather the Lee Kashing Knowledge Institute. I'm going to get that right tonight at some point. At St. Michael's Hospital's latest initiative, um, I, we're going to be speaking about heart health each year, in fact. About 250,000 potential life years are lost across Canada. Come on, folks, we can do better than that. Due to cardiovascular diseases and other chronic heart health issues. Tonight, we're going to be uh, facing those uh, issues and telling you what to do about your heart health. The foundation suggests that 9 out of 10 people, in fact, uh, Canadians are jeopardizing themselves, not knowing about what the risks are. Uh, here to help us understand this is Dr. Uh, Chi, and uh, you are a uh, you are um, a cardiologist, spokesperson for the Heart and Stroke Foundation, and uh, Sherry Torcos, who's author and pharmacist with uh, special interest in natural medicine. Right. So let's start off, uh, Dr. Chow. What is uh, the most important thing that's come out of this recent report card at the Heart and Stroke Foundation? So in this year's report card, we find out that many of the Canadians have also overestimated how healthy they are and underestimate how unhealthy they are. In fact, 9 out of 10 uh, of the Canadians think that they're healthy. But in fact, 9 out of 10 Canadians have at least one uh, cardiac risk factor that put them at risk of developing heart disease and stroke. I think a lot of us, you know, mismanage ourselves uh, that way. It's hard to get motivated. It's hard to be preventive, right? I mean, a lot of us think we're healthier than we are. We'll be speaking to some survivors later on in the show and talking about their uh, pretty miraculous stories, uh, you know, as it relates to, you know, what put them at risk. And, and, and one of them in particular actually had no risk factor. So what are these hidden risks? What do we have to be looking out for? Yeah, many of these hidden risk factors don't have any symptoms initially. Right. For example, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, diabetes and initially they may not have any symptoms at all and also many people are uh, overweight or obese or they're physically inactive right. and many people also smoke despite how many times we tell them not to uh, as well as some people uh, drink too much alcohol as well. Sure, sure. You just wrote a book, mm -hmm. Saving Women's Hearts. That's right. How do some of these risk factors, uh, you know, relate to women? Because it used to be considered a men's issue, really. Yeah, I think, Not you know, when ago. we think about heart disease, most of us don't picture a woman. We think of it more of a man's disease, yet heart disease is the leading cause of death in women. So it's more serious than all forms of cancer combined. And I think women really need to take their heart health very seriously. As Dr. Chow pointed out, some of the risk factors in activity, too much uh, drinking, not eating a healthy diet, also too much stress and a lack of sleep. These are two very important factors that have been identified in a lot of recent studies. If you're not getting enough sleep at night, if you're too stressed out, that can have some damaging effects on your heart, and in particular, damaging on women's hearts. So Dr. Chow, when we're looking at this heart over here, I mean, are we now acknowledging the fact that stress may be the number one silent uh, killer or the number one silent uh, issue when it relates to this uh, organ? Well, many risk factors actually contribute differently uh, to developing heart disease and stroke of and also reducing our life. For example, if we are uh, overweight and not being physically active, it can, we can very easily lose four years of our life. If you have hyperpressure that is not treated, then it's about two and a half. If we smoke, then we can lose about 14 years of our life. Are people still smoking? Yes. I mean, uh, what's the rates is what I'm really getting to. I mean, I, I understand something like 12% have stopped. They've heeded caution. They're listening. Uh, is it something around that, that uh, percentage that uh, people have stopped? Yep. But more still have to, right? Yeah. 
And Despite more, the best effort that we have in the country and also different uh, levels of the government that we have put in different uh, uh, laws and also increasing the price and reducing the access, about 10% or so of the people uh, are still smoking. However, the rates among young people are smoking are still rising. So we're very concerned about that. So this is the typical stuff. People not exercising enough, people that are obese. So these are all the typical things that make us think of, you know, that's a cardiovascular heart uh, risk patient. What came out of the Heart and Stroke Foundation report card that actually shocked or surprised you as a cardiologist? Well, many things is, um, you know, we don't take care of ourselves well enough. Often we wait until symptoms developed. The other thing that we notice is that when we go and see our doctor, often they would uh, take our blood pressure, about 80% of them uh, will take the blood pressure, but about 50% uh, of them will measure the weight, but only about 10 or 15% of the uh, family doctor will only uh, measure their weight circumference, which we know is a right. very important risk factor. Right, yeah, in fact, I'm in the habit of checking, uh, you know, all my clients for fat tissue percentage using an impedance analysis. Uh, that's a, it's a really important thing, so more doctors should be looking at hip waist ratio, and, and why is that? What does that really tell us as a predictive marker? Well, we do know that uh, when people have an increased waist circumference, for example, in male more than 35 uh, to 37 uh, inches, and in women uh, more than 35 inches, then they are at risk of developing heart disease. They may be harboring very important risk factors such as right. hyperpressure, diabetes, uh, cholesterol uh, problem, and uh, also that can increase the chance of dying by about 2 to 2.5 times. Excellent. That's really important information. And as you written the book with mm -hmm. a cardiologist, Dr. Bulati, yeah. uh, it was an, it's an incredible book. How Thank does you. this hip waist ratio circumference issue, uh, you know, relate to women? How is well, this important it, for women? Obesity, centripetal obesity, is an issue for women as well. And when we're talking about centripetal obesity, we're talking about the apple-shaped body. So having a larger abdomen, as Dr. Chow pointed out, for women having a waist circumference of greater than 35 inches or 88 centimeters uh, puts an individual at greater risk of heart disease. And there's of course metabolic syndrome which we've talked about before that collection of insulin resistance and, and cardiovascular risk factors that really ups the ante when it comes to heart disease so these are the good news is though these are things that we can take charge of we can do a lot to manage our weight to control our blood sugar to improve insulin sensitivity and control cholesterol and blood pressure excellent and that's the good news there's a lot we can do for prevention excellent and up we'll actually be talking about yes. certain seven steps that you have which are that's wonderful right. steps Some a few keys. action points that women in particular can start taking that's uh, right effect for. Dr. Chow, I have to, you know, you have a wonderful little app. Everyone's into technology these days. Maybe too much so that this is actually causing some of the stress that we're trying to deal with to lower uh, our uh, blood pressure. But let's get to this helpful technology. Technology that people should be using more of. You've got an iPhone application. Tell us a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. At Heart and Stroke, we have a website that actually allows uh, many of the people to go on and assess the risk individually. Okay. And we do know many people are on the go these days. And we created an application that runs on uh, multiple different uh, smartphones. Yep. And and, uh, and allow people to actually spend a few minutes so they can actually save many years of their life. Uh, How does it work? So you can click on here. It's a series of questions that you can answer. It takes about 15 minutes or so to go over. Yep. And you can use it in English and French as well. And then we'll create actually a customized version of your own personalized risk profile. So you're going to answer these questions and essentially understand what risk you're at. And this is what we're talking about in the beginning is that uh, people really don't understand their risk. About nine, is it? Nine of ten Canadians simply think that really they're not the ones at risk. That's right. Yeah. So I think, you know, by going through it step by step and you can get a customized profile, you can assess which area you are very good at and which area that you should really spend a lot more time working on to try to reduce your risk or speak to your doctor so you can be treated appropriately. Okay, Dr. Chow, you're a cardiologist and your time is valuable and we really appreciate you having you here. Let's use your time. What are those risks? What are those immediate signs and symptoms that you might be having a heart, att a heart attack or stroke? So we did some actually studies uh, uh, recently and actually show that about um, half of the people don't know what are the essential uh, symptoms that yeah. people have when they have a heart attack or stroke. And a lot of people ignore it too if it happens, right? Yeah. So what are they? So many older people and women and also people who don't speak English actually tend to come to the hospital later because they uh, deny them. And uh, the 
symptoms that we are looking for is when people for heart attack or angina is pressure on the chest often it radiates down to the left arm or to the back or to the neck and they can have sweating they can feel nauseated they can feel indigestion and sometimes it can be quite atypical uh, than the ones that you typically see on TV, mm -hmm. uh, especially among women right. and also people who are older or people who have diabetes. Right. And some people, you know, might have heart pain or they might feel it in their chest. And, you know, maybe it is a soft tissue issue. Maybe it's musculoskeletal or related to the muscles and bones. But should you be ignoring it? Should you be just sort of throwing it off? Uh, and saying maybe it's something else or should you immediately uh, go and see your family doctor? Well, I think many people have different aches and pains and I think you should really understand what these symptoms are and at our website at www.heartandstroke.ca we have listed some of these symptoms and also the ones that I've just talked about. Excellent. How about stroke? Because a lot of people misidentify stroke as well. Yeah, we, we did the study actually we showed that people get confused between heart attack and stroke right. and stroke is really something that uh, affects our brain. So when there's a blockage in our brain vessels uh, or something that uh, uh, got into our brain uh, area that uh, prevent the brain tissues from working, then people can have a stroke. Usually people have weakness in their arm, numbness, and also uh, trouble seeing and trouble with walking as well as trouble with their speech. Okay, very good stuff. And you know, this differs a little bit over to you now, Sherry. Mm -hmm. uh, not a cardiologist, a pharmacist, special interest mm -hmm. in natural medicine. How do some of these warning signs differ uh, as it relates to women in particular? Well, when we're talking about symptoms of a heart attack, um, as Dr. Chow pointed out, it's that pain and crushing feeling you can have in your chest, but not always. Um, sometimes you could have symptoms of fatigue, nausea. The chain is not always, the pain is not always in the chest, but it could be in the neck. It could be radiating down the arm. And the unfortunate reality is that women often delay seeking treatment when they are having signs of a heart attack and even if they do go to the hospital they're more likely to be dismissed as having stress or anxiety or a non cardiovascular episode and as a result of that women are much more likely to not only suffer a serious heart attack but to die after that first heart attack in fact in the first year after an individual has a heart attack women are twice as likely to die as men are and that's really unfortunate women need to be aware of the signs if something is out of the ordinary you don't feel quite right, don't dismiss it as stress, anxiety, or heartburn. Go to the hospital if you're having any of those symptoms of a heart attack so that you can get the proper treatment. We know our bodies best, and if something isn't right, you need to be proactive. Very good information, Sherry. Well, coming up after the break, we'll be talking a lot more about foods and supplements, those that you should be taking, counter interactions with Sherry Torcos, who's a pharmacist, can give us some more information. You know, during this quick break, your heart's going to beat over 300 times, and that's a lot of work. What are you doing to keep it healthy? Return uh, over with us here live from the Li Ka Shing um, uh, Research uh, Development Institute, and we'll see you right after the break. Reach us in the GTA by dialing 416-872-2724 or outside the area at 1-888-863-2724. Send an email to wildonhealth at cp24.com or follow Bryce on Twitter by visiting cp24.com. And we're back here at Lee Kashing Knowledge Institute. This is uh, St. Michael's latest uh, innovation and project. And there is obviously an irrefutable uh, connection between food and heart health, food and health in general. I'm standing here with Rick Gallup. He is uh, previous CEO, president of the Heart and Stroke Foundation, as well as author of the GI Diet. You've done a ton of work. Yep. I'm also uh, joined again by Sherry Torcos, who's a pharmacist and uh, special interest in natural medicine. So we're going to get to supplementation and all of that in a second. Rick, I want to start with you. you know, first, yep. just quickly to 
describe what your tenure was like with the Heart and Stroke Foundation when you were uh, with them? Well, I was in for 16 years, and it, uh, of course, heart disease, when I joined, was killing 50% of the population. Yep. When I left, it was killing about 35, and the numbers are still dropping. So, so good work. So been huge progress in terms of uh, what we've been able to do through the, uh, the research and the work that the Foundation's done. Excellent. So why is it that uh, we're learning more about, more about food, and in particular, the sugar content in food, and maybe even more so how food is getting into us at a certain rate. Tell us all about that, what the yeah. book's about, and how this is helping people with heart disease. Well, this is the reason I got into the whole GI diet. The idea here was we had a problem we were not solving very successfully, if you look at the stats, in terms of heart disease and people putting on weight and obesity. So the GI is very simple. The glycemic index measures the speed at which foods digest through our digestive system. Foods that digest very quickly, of course, are, the, are typically sugar, which is at 100 on the index. Yes. And those are the foods we're trying to avoid, and they are here what we call the red light foods here, which are the foods that digest very quickly. Yeah, so what does that mean, digest quickly? I mean, well, some, basically what we're trying to, most carbohydrates, all carbohydrates, break down into glucose, uh, from glucose, which is our source of energy. Mm -hmm. Some break down very quickly, um, typically would be most of today's highly processed breakfast cereals. Some break down very slowly, fruits and vegetables, pasta, oatmeal, which of course is, a, is, is an ideal breakfast. Yep. And because it breaks down more slowly, Slowly, it leaves you feeling fuller for longer, so you eat less. Okay. Of course, that's the secret of anybody trying to lose weight, eat less. That's the premise of your entire series of books, right? That's correct. You've more than one. Yes. Red, don't touch. Orange once in a while. Green, go. Is go, right? That's the ones. Tell us a little bit more about uh, fiber, because a lot of us know about fiber as it relates to gut health, but a lot yes. of us don't know about fiber as it relates to heart health. Okay, well, it's a very important. Cholesterol and fiber are very much connected, and it, we're talking about soluble and insoluble. Soluble fiber is the the one that we're interested in here that'll help heart health. This yep. is what reduces cholesterol. Typical examples of that are th things like citrus fruits, uh, old-fashioned oatmeal here. Oatmeal yep. is a terrific um, uh, source of but fiber. The, but the rule, though, it's the ones you have to cook, not the instant, right? That's right. I mean, that's a perfect example, I think, of uh, the transit time, of the speed at which it's going to get digested. Let, the secret is let your body do the processing, not the manufacturer. Right. Okay, so the more your body does the processing, the longer it takes, and that's what we're advocating. Love it. Okay, so let's talk quickly about sterols. We're hearing more about these, just as we are antioxidants. Uh, what are sterols doing for us and well, our heart health? What, I, what I'm really surprised about is it's taken so long for sterols to get into our foods. This is something that Canada, you know, again, unfortunately, we're lagging the field here. This is something, in fact, that has been accepted in Europe and, and the States, for God's sake. Yep, yep. And with Why are so slow? It's a I really thing. don't know. It's been proven uh, scientifically, the plant sterols, are a terrific assist for heart health yep. and we've been very slow in this country uh, to adopting these and having them put into our foods okay so look for it on uh, foods that have uh, it within so it's 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 added within yes and I've... also what foods are highest uh, with sterols uh, by na by nature right I'm now? not I'm not an expert on this I know I know here Sherry, Sherry, let me ask you that yeah, question, in, and then we'll um, also talk about the supplements that are related well, to sterols. Plant sterols are naturally occurring plant compounds. You'll find them in nuts and seeds. They're also in certain vegetables. I brought some pasta with me today that mm -hmm. um, actually has plant sterols added to it. Okay. Um, Cora Wise, which is it's a it's a brand of plant sterols, is now being added to a lot of different foods. So and that's as, what we're looking for. Look for sterols on the package. Plant sterols. That's right. Okay. And and as Rick was mentioning, they're now approved in Canada for addition into food, and they do have benefits for lowering total cholesterol and LDL and they can be added through diet, through foods, or through supplements. Yep. Um, I also brought other things that you can consider for a heart-healthy lifestyle. Okay. We hear a ton about fish oils, the omega-3 fatty acids, and fish in general, which can help to um, reduce uh, triglycerides. They can help reduce inflammation, clotting. There have been a number of studies showing that individuals that consume diets high in fish have lower rates of heart disease. It can help protect heart attack and stroke. Um, so Sweet. consider fish oils. I also have some garlic here. An aged garlic extract in particular has uh, been studied extensively. There have been actually been hundreds of studies on kyolic, which is a type of aged garlic extract, showing that it can modestly help with blood pressure, cholesterol, clotting, again, inflammation, even help with lowering homocysteine levels and slowing atherosclerosis. So now, those are important things. Homocysteine things. is really important to keep down, and, and, and that might be a whole other show and can of worms I'm opening up. That's but right. That's something, maybe a test that you should ask for well, uh, with you, a family you, doctor. What a doctor gladi, well, a cardiologist. Well, uh, the, the challenge with homocysteine 
homocysteine is, we know that elevated homocysteine is, is connected with heart disease. However, we thought that lowering homocysteine by taking, for example, B supplements would offer benefits, and that hasn't panned out in the research. Yeah, the research so at this solid. point, no, it's not solid. We're, we're still recommending people get folic acid and B vitamins in their diet, but okay. don't take high amounts with the idea that you're going to lower homocysteine and protect against heart disease because the science isn't there yet. Sherry, it's really important that we cover this. What is it that people are perhaps taking in the way of supplements? Everyone thinks supplements are natural and it's okay to go and take That's them. Right. Along with heart medication. Along yeah. with medication that, that doesn't mix well. And you have to be very careful because some supplements can have blood thinning effects and they can enhance the effect if you're already on a blood thinner. For example, a commonly used blood thinner, which is warfarin or coumadin, if you're taking that with other supplements like ginkgo biloba, even high doses of fish oils and some types of other supplements can further enhance the blood thinning effects so that you might notice if you bump into something you bruise easily or if you cut yourself you bleed and you can't stop the bleeding. There are also certain supplements that are used more for energy and for um, stimulation effects to keep you up. They can increase your blood pressure, your heart rate. Often they have a lot of caffeine. Sometimes they have herbs in them that can also raise blood pressure. Not a good idea if you have high blood pressure and are taking medication. And I think the really important message is that if you are taking heart medication, whether it's for your blood pressure, cholesterol, or an arrhythmia, don't just go and self-select supplements. Talk to your pharmacist, talk to your doctor to make sure you're not taking something that could interact negatively. It's a really important point. And a lot of pharmacists now are actually doing more of these screenings, right? I mean, this That's is a new right. initiative. We do, we, ha we do a lot of screening in the pharmacy now. We can check blood pressure and cholesterol. If it's elevated, we encourage you to see your doctor. We also advise people on drug supplement interactions and how to use supplements appropriately. And that's something that my co-author and I discuss in our book, Saving Women's Hearts, is it's a holistic approach to better heart health, eating healthy, exercising, managing your stress and sleep, and taking supplements smartly. Excellent stuff. Saving women's hearts. It's and in seen. fact, to a few lucky callers this evening, we'll be giving away a few copies. Very That's good right. work. And it's you in all major bookstores now. And, and I'd like to just mention my co-author, Dr. Martha Galati, who's a yes. cardiologist. Um, we met at McMaster University many years ago. She's done some groundbreaking research, um, specifically in women and heart disease, looking at levels of physical fitness as an indicator of cardiovascular mortality. Excellent so, work. Yeah, and I've, I've, re out. I've read through the book. It's an excellent book. We'll also be giving away uh, uh, Rick Gallup's book here, The GI Diet, an incredible book. He's got a whole series out. This is what you eat, and it's also got in there what you don't eat. Coming back after the break, we are going to be looking at diagnostic machines. You know, that's a very important thing to see your family doctor probably more than once a year, but it's also important to get screened more effectively, possibly do uh, an ECG, maybe ask your doctor about an ultrasound, taking the time out to looking into your risk factors. That's coming up right after the break here live at the Li Ka Shing uh, um, Knowledge Institute. Stay right there. Reach us in the GTA by dialing 416-872-2724 or outside the area at 1-888-863-2724. Send an email to wildonhealth at cp24.com or follow Bryce on Twitter by visiting cp24.com. Before starting any new health program or before you begin taking any medication or supplement, always check with your primary health care provider. Well, we're back here live on location at the Lee Ka Shing Knowledge Institute. This is St. Michael's Hospital's latest edition, and I'm here with uh, Dr. Uh, Chow, and I'm also here with Brian. You know, guys, the importance of screening is absolutely key. Brian, you know that more than anybody. Sure. Brian Kapkin is a survival, you know, a survivor uh, of heart disease and uh, triple bypass. We'll be getting uh, his story momentarily. Um, you know, ideally, we should all be screened. But at the end of the day, it's actually the truth. This is the Heart Stroke Foundation's uh, study showed that about 50% of uh, patients aren't even asked in their doctor's appointment whether or not they're, uh, you know, uh, smoking. Uh, whether their blood pressure is high or even checking their blood pressure. Is that explainable? I mean, you're a cardiologist, but how can that be? Well, often our system is actually very much overwhelmed. Yeah. Uh, a family doctor, you know, takes about six minutes to nine minutes to complete a visit, and there are many other people waiting. So usually they just deal with the problem at hand. And I think we should really encourage everyone to make an appointment once a year at least to actually have a good 
complete physical checkup, where the blood pressure, uh, your cholesterol, uh, whether you have diabetes is all checked out, and also your weight, your waist circumference, uh, all these has to be checked. Excellent. Brian, survivor. Yes. Um, you know, I love your story. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. I mean, it's quite inspirational. Um, you, give us, just run us through the, uh, what happened to you as a, as, a, uh, as a heart attack ensued. Yeah, you know, it was four years ago this month I was on the tennis court warming up to play against my opponent. And I didn't feel right, and I continued the match, but that not feeling right was actually shortness of breath, which I didn't re recognize as a symptom of heart disease. I actually had to shut myself down on that match that night. And when I went home, I told my wife I had lost the match. She didn't care so much about that. But when I told her about the winded story, she immediately said, trip to the family doctor. And like a middle-aged guy, I said no. But she was persistent, and uh, that was a life-saving decision that I uh, listened to her, and I went to see my family doctor. It takes most of us guys uh, to have our head fall off before we show up <laughs> at our family doctor, nonetheless, the ER. And you're not here in the ER no, I'm uh, not. today. <laughs> we are doing this as a demonstration. Uh, Dr. Chow, what, are we, what exactly are we looking at right now? So we have a number of machines that we brought over here. Uh, we don't do all these things all the time yeah. unless someone's have a major complaint like chest discomfort, trouble breathing. Why don't we do an EKG all the time? Well, we should do a blood pressure all the time. And over there, you can see a uh, blood pressure machine yep. way over to the right. Yep. And uh, usually we should uh, measure the blood pressure at least three to six times to approximate the pressure that they should they will usually get yep. uh, when they're outside. And you're also uh, doing an ultrasound here? Yep, and also the ECG machine here. You can see Brian is actually hooked up with the ECG machine. And we should do one at least uh, on a regular basis uh, to make sure that the patient is not in uh, rhythms other than a regular rhythm. How does Brian look today? Uh, he looks fantastic. I heard you say at the break, in fact, that he's got a really pretty heart. Yeah. Excellent. So you the must be happy about that. I am. Um, yeah, the reason why we really should check the rhythm is that because if people are in atrial fibrillation, which is a irregular rhythm, it actually predisposes them to actually having strokes. So it's important to actually do a regular uh, checkup in terms of the ECG, and we have that uh, hooked up with uh, Brian. Excellent. And what we have today now on my, uh, where I'm sitting at, is a uh, cardiac ultrasound or heart ultrasound machine. It's also called an echocardiogram. This is something that we do when patients actually complain of certain symptoms, like chest pain, trouble breathing, or they're swollen, or they're short of breath. And this machine allows us to use the ultrasound technology to look at people's hearts. And by doing that, we can actually assess the function of the heart and also the valve, whether they are competent, whether they are leaking or narrowed, and also uh, look at many other things, like you know structural abnormalities. For example, they are born with certain uh, congenital heart problems. Here we can see actually uh, Brian's heart very nicely. Excellent. Brian, before we go to break here, sure. keep doing what you're doing, Dr. Chow, um, and you'll report to us whether there's any abnormalities <laughs> there. I loved what you said in terms of, you know, sort of your prevention plan, because you didn't go down at the tennis courts. It I, wasn't I like didn't. you had a heart attack. No. Um, you know, but you, you listed three things uh, that you made me aware of uh, that made you go and sort of see your family doctor, uh, you know, in a preventative plan. What were they? The first thing is I listened to my body. The, the way I was feeling on the court wasn't right for the way I know I can play. Two, and guys, this is for you out there, I did listen to my wife. I went for that appointment. And three, when I got there, my doctor listened to me. You know, he didn't know that I had a family history uh, of, uh, of heart disease, and he actually wanted to put me back on the tennis court until I told him I was winded in the warm-up and hadn't started to exercise yet. And when you factor those three things together, uh, they were life-saving moments. Excellent stuff. Listening to your wife, that's really important. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? Shall do more of that. <laughs> Again, guys, get yourself uh, checked up. Right after the break, it is so important that we all know what an AED is. You've seen them, you know, on TV at, uh, you know, soap opera where you get shocked back to life. Well, they're in the public uh, areas. We also want to know about CPR, and it could save your life, the life of somebody you love, or even a complete stranger. We're going to take a look at that proper resuscitation uh, when we come back right after the break here live at the Lee Ka Shing Knowledge Institute. See you right there. Reach us in the GTA by dialing 416 872 2724 or outside the area at 1 888 863 2724. Send an email to wildonhealth at cp24.com or follow Bryce on Twitter by visiting cp24.com. here live at the Lee Ka Shing uh, Institute and I'm here with Joanne and we're going to be talking right now about the importance of CPR and an AED. Joanne, first give us an idea as to what an AED is. 
Well, an AED is an automated external defibrillator, and what it does is it helps or complements the process of CPR to basically correct a, uh, a basically a lethal rhythm called ventricular fibrillation. And I understand that this is in fact probably one of the most life-saving contraptions uh, that we would be faced, or you know, we, we could actually use yeah. uh, day to day. They're all over the place. Where do we find them? Well, all public spaces is what we're mandating them for, uh, especially across the country. Right now, we're making sure that they're in like arenas, hockey centers, uh, community centers and schools. One of the things that's really important to understand about the, uh, the importance of this machine is that it's a complement to CPR. Without doing anything but just calling 911, a person's chance of surviving a cardiac arrest is about 3 to 5 percent. With starting the chain of survival, calling 911, getting CPR started, and attaching one of these machines, their chances go up to almost as high as 75 percent. That's amazing. Let's take a look at that. Let's, Absolutely. Let's uh, pull the machine out. And while we do, um, you know, what I want to ask you is uh, a little bit about uh, CPR methods. What, uh, what, what is your title exactly at the Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation? So um, my manager, I'm the manager of resuscitation programs, and basically what we do is we, we attach the leads here. Sure, we just advocate for the uh, the, the placement of, of um, uh, defibrillators in public places, but. Heart and Stroke Foundation of Canada actually establishes the um, the guidelines for CPR and emergency cardiac care in Canada. Okay. So the machine is very intuitive. Once I turn it on, it's actually going to do prompts, okay, and we're just going to listen to it. Yeah, perfect. Remove clothes from patient's chest. So this is all very automated, and as we're doing this, people shouldn't be afraid to use this because this is what's Peel saving white lives. Peel pads from gray plastic case. Attach pads to bare skin exactly as shown. So this is really something that is all, all automated, right? If you see somebody Remove lying... clothes from the patient's chest. Just following the instructions along. Okay, and Joanne, as you attach that over there... Peel white... Stay clear of patient. So I gotta move away and it's gonna deliver a analyzing shock. And at the end of the day, rhythm. this is what it is. Analyzing the rhythm, and if it's shock's advised, it's gonna be given. If not, stay it's not. Stay clear right. of patient. Okay. And it's the analyzing operator that's in control rhythm. of it. And the operator's shock in control. Advised. So there we go, shock's stay advised. Clear of patient. Press clear? the flashing orange button. Now, shot okay. delivered. Excellent. Be sure emergency medical services have been called. Okay, good. Now, we don't have time for all of the, you know, CPR, but quickly, it's no longer CPR as we used to think with the airway, right? Tell us quickly. That's right. It's CAB. So basically, if somebody collapses and you can't wake them up, you want to just tap and shout, hello, hello, wake up, wake up. If you can't wake them up, call 911. We want you to get on the chest. It's good, hard, deep, fast compressions. Let's see you do it. And basically, uh, one of You're the You're going to lead us out to this. We're going to lead it out with um, a little rhythm that you can do is just put your hands in the center of the chest, push hard, deep, and fast, and you're singing Staying Alive. Staying Alive, Staying Alive, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Staying Alive. And those at the Heart and Stroke Foundation are going to keep us all staying alive. For more information about today's show or previous episodes of Wild on Health, please visit cp24.com slash wildhealth. Thank you so much to all of my guests, Joanne, and stay well.